I'm the Oscar. Contestant number five. Stop using paper cups. Stop using paper cups. Contestant number five. Check, check. Am I audible? Yes. Don't start the pen. In my school, I was playing football with my friends. Then, I got very exhausted and extremely thirsty. So I went to the nearest water dispenser. As I reached to get a paper cup, I realized there were no cups. I was shocked. How am I supposed to drink without any cups? At that point, I saw a poster which caught my attention. It said, stop using paper cups and save the world. I was confused. How can paper cups save the world? What was the message behind that poster? And why was it placed there? Country Chair, Honorable Judges, guests, parents, and fellow gamblers, a very good evening. Good evening. At first, I couldn't understand the message which was de delivered by or conveyed by the poster. My school, when my school usually does these kind of things, I feel there's something suspicious going on. Maybe the school is trying to reduce the amount of paper cups being used by students. Maybe they're trying to reduce the amount of benefits we get from the school and saying it's harmful for the environment. Either way, I was confused. So I asked one of my friends, I said, hey man, how can, uh, how can paper cups save the world? And he said, well, if we stop using paper cups, we could save a lot of trees. And then, instead of paper cups, we could use water bottles and refill them instead. So, it turns out that the poster did have a strong message after all. When the message finally triggered in my mind, a few things came into my understanding. Firstly, I realized that there are small things that we could take into our day-to-day -day basis that could eventually lead into a big thing in the future. For example, in the United States, they use 100 million cups per day, which makes up to 16 billion cups per year, which comes from at least 7 million trees. Disposable cups, it's a small thing that we use for our daily convenience, but we never think how something small could have a big thing, could have a big impact in our future. Secondly, I, real, I realized, or is it really that necessary to save the trees and tree plantations? There are plenty of forests and tree plantations around the world. Do we really need to save them all? We live in this part of the world where there are not many trees. We live without any problem. Well, see, the thing is, all the tree-related products come to us by other countries. So we don't get to see the shortages happening there. So let's see, why do we need trees anyway? We need trees because they act as a natural air conditioner and they reduce the heat significantly. Secondly, they provide us with woods, foods, medicines, and fuels. And thirdly, they provide habitats for wildlife. There are also indirect uses of trees as well. For example, they make, they make nice environmental-like places, for example, parks. They preserve the groundwater level by reducing evaporation. And thirdly and finally, they increase the value of property and land. Therefore, there are lots of different benefits that we get from trees. But those are not the points I want to highlight today. There's another vital benefit that we get from trees, and that is its ability to stop global warming and, of course, reduce carbon dioxide in the air. The trees have the ability to absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen into the air. So why is carbon dioxide increasing so rapidly? Well, because of the increasing population, we need to burn more and more fuels, which puts more carbon dioxide in the, into the air. The latest information says that the carbon dioxide level has increased 10% in the last 20 years for over 400 million parts around the world. Also, another major factor is that the carbon dioxide also has the ability to absorb heat, making the earth warmer, which results in extreme weather patterns 
For example, in one part of the world, there will be lots of heavy raining and flooding. And in the other part of the world, there will be lots of severe droughts and spreading deserts. This factor is also going to get worsened by deforestation. That means that there will be very less forests available. Even though the carbon dioxide level is at its peak, we cannot stop producing energy because we need energy. We can't ask the factory owners to stop their production. We can't suddenly go back to the past where we were farmers, we used bullock carts, we used horse carriages. We can't blame the scientists. The only possible option is to plant trees on Earth. Can we plant trees here in the desert where we don't own any land? No, we cannot. But we could obviously plant it in our own countries. Also, we could participate and contribute to green teams and eco-friendly clubs. Another vital thing that we could do is to limit and reduce the amount of disposable cups, tissue papers, A4 papers, pencils, and other tree related products in our day-to-day -day basis. Also remember the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. As I said in the beginning of my speech, a small thing could lead into a big thing in the future. So why don't we take a small thing or a small action towards saving the trees and do some initiation towards saving the trees and environmental protection <coughs> and let's make a better world for our future generations to come. Over to you, Contest Chair. Now we'll have a point of time.